Welcome to Pokhara! We have arrived after Everest Base Camp track and we're about to explore the town and see the famous World Peace Pagoda right up on Ananda Hill. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti! <laughs> After the trek and adventure of a lifetime coming down from Mount Everest Base Camp, it was time to reconnect as a family and spend some just quality time relaxing, chilling out, sleeping in <laughs> after all the 6 a.m. wake ups from the journey. And so we decided to go to Pokhara and spend some time by the lake. After almost a, a week apart, it was so sweet and very emotional to come back together and reconnect with Mama after her climb all the way up to base camp. And so we spent a little bit of time in, in Namche and then uh, continued all the way down to Lukla all together. I think it felt a bit surreal to be reunited as a family. Like having that time all on my own, you I started to feel what it was like just to stand on my own two feet, my own little self in this big world, and then to have to come back together with two other individual selves that are so close to my heart and a part of my soul and my heart and my spirit and my world was just like a dream come true. Pokhara is a beautiful, magical city in central Nepal. I think it's the second largest city after Kathmandu. And it is very close to my heart because it is where I went seven years ago to do my first yoga teacher training. And I spent a few weeks there and made a lot of friends and uh, made beautiful memories. And so just like going up to base camp, retracing the steps from seven years ago, I was very excited to go back and uh, relive my memories and come back together as a family and spend a little bit of time there for much needed rest after many hectic weeks. <laughs> Pokhara is ripe for all sorts of activities so with the lake you can take a boat out and go across to this beautiful peace pagoda which we did do hiked up felt like we were trekking again to base camp <laughs> We also got out in town and hired some bikes and just went along the hillside and saw these simple towns and beautiful people who we don't think see many Westerners. So it was a real treat just to see the simplicity of life around Pokhara. And it was Sophie's very first time on a bike. That's true. And she did great. She loved it. She actually fell asleep at one point. <laughs> That's how she was rocked into it. So. It was very sweet. Yeah, we had a beautiful afternoon. Mm.
We're here in Pokhara, about to go and visit Devi's Falls, which is a, a very enchanted part of town. It's a river that flows into the earth and disappears. How mysterious. Let's, Let's go check go. it out. Check it out. Believers, try your best to stick your coin on the plate carrying the image of Goddess Manakamana. Your wish will be surely fulfilled. Try, try, and try. Be more and make wishful one. <laughs> I am 36. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm old. It's official. <laughs> That's Shiva. That's Ganesh. That's Ganesh. We've arrived at Gupteshwar Mahadev Cave and we're going to check it out. Let's do it. All right. On our shopping adventures, we decided to support the local communities and venture into some of the Tibetan refugee camps that are around Pokhara. I think there are three big ones that have been there for quite a long time. Um, first, we went to sort of check it out and support. And as we got there, we got to, to meet not only those who were the original refugees, but also their families and their kids and kids of their kids and, and learn about the complexity of the issue between Tibet and China, uh, something that has been going on since the late 1950s. Uh, and it was kind of bittersweet. It was so sweet to, to talk to the locals who are now have established themselves as uh, Tibetans in Pokhara in Nepal but the nature of their stay is or their status has always been refugees which means they can't get regular jobs and they can't drive cabs and so they have to fend for themselves and that's why they make all of these beautiful handcrafted items and then make living by, by selling them and we don't claim to be, by any stretch of the imagination, experts about what's happening there. We were just really grateful that we could take the time to visit this community and support them and hear their stories and really feel their warmth. Despite their situation, they were some of the sweetest, kindest, most 
gracious and welcoming people that we've met so far. What was really inspiring was the vibe we got from the local refugees, which is not at all about holding grudges or needing to fight for anything. They have this beautiful, very sensible Buddhist approach to themselves, to the world, to their situation. And there's a sense of appreciation for the local Nepalese community that have taken them in and, and cared for them for all these years. And it was very touching and very inspiring to actually see that. Because we felt, just from the little we knew, it seemed like we felt more shaken and um, almost frustrated by what we learned about the situation. And then when we spoke to the locals, we were kind of taken back by their ability to be at peace with it all. What we learned from visiting the Tibetan refugee camps is that we need to educate ourselves more about what's happening there. So we would encourage anyone who's interested, doesn't know about the situation, just to get informed and educate yourself, learn about what's happening. The more that we know, the more that we can be of influence. Our last few weeks in Nepal have been so colorful and vibrant and rich, full of activity from climbing to Mount Everest Base Camp to visiting the birthplace of Buddha and seeing all of, all of the sights and sounds and smells of Nepal. Despite all the self-empowerment and wonderment and transformation that we had gone through over the last few weeks, we felt like there was something else brewing, some change abound, and we could not have foreseen what was ahead of us in our next destination. I feel like I've been born again. Got your heart on your sleeve. So nice. So nice. Hey, you. Yeah, your color is changing.